Good afternoon, everybody. We're here at the Timeless Group program called Community Project. I'm glad that everybody could make it, and I'm sure that more will be coming in momentarily, but we want to keep time, and uh, that's very important that we are called Timeless, so we should also be on time as well. So um, we have a couple of people here that's going to be presenting, that's going to have something to say. We're going to have some testimonies uh, from some of our members as well as visitors that's traveled to see us and participate in this program today. So um, without further ado, I want to just go over a, a couple of things that we have going on for our program today. <clears throat> so today we're here at the Pseudo Room here in Oakland, California, located on Broadway 2141 Broadway in downtown Oakland. Some of the topics that we want to cover today is related to mass incarceration, uh, another soldier's return, where we have two soldiers here today, or three, actually, <laughs> that'll be returning uh, to the community, that'll be sharing their testimony with us today, as well as targeted programs. We're going to talk a little bit about Timeless and how we have targeted programs, uh, the need for outreach workers, as well as a presentation by the Table Foundation, as well as other programs that may be here today uh, in audience. So I just want to, first of all, let you know that if you can look at the board, it says at the top programs, you have education, rehabilitation, and those are the two primary things that we need in order to uh, uh, reform someone, whether it be someone that's uh, recently returning to society from incarceration or even a youth, because it's very important to have youth development programs. Uh, in fact, we just recently changed the name from youth intervention to youth development. We think that the name youth development is more appropriate because sometimes when you say intervention, uh, these are terms that are used that sometimes uh, scare away potential uh, mentor or mentees that may be interested in, in taking advantage of our services. So when they hear the term youth intervention, they automatically assume or they're in trouble or they're juvenile delinquent or something like that. But we want to embrace our youth in a way that they feel a part of the community and that they can uh, be provided with some of the same services that we offer through Timeless. So youth development is also a part of our program, which we have on Mondays. On Mondays, we have the program in Union City, um, located on 111 uh, 8th Street. That's 411 8th Street in Union City, and that's taking place on Mondays from 3.30 to 5 o'clock. And then on Thursday, we have our adult reentry program, which is taking place in the same location from 5.30 to 7 o'clock. So that's what we have going on currently with Timeless, and as we proceed through the program today, we're going to be sharing a number of things that we're doing with the program and how we're trying to connect the program with the community. Uh, because without the community, we really can't go forward uh, without getting the community involvement and grassroots activity, things that's going to bring attention and light to what it is we're doing here as an organization. Um, it, it's very, very uh, critical that we have your support as a community. So um, without further ado, I want to bring forward one of our, our speakers. And who, and this let me say, um, he's recently released from prison, from, from Avenal State Prison. In fact, the same institution I was incarcerated myself. Uh, his name is Earl Sims, and he was recently released like two weeks ago, actually. And he's now in society after serving 22 years in the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. Um, we also have Johnny Bennett, who's also uh, a recently incarcerated uh, inmate who's now living in Fairfield, California, who's with us today, who's going to also be sharing his story, and he was really active as well in the programs. In fact, um, the youth development program that we had inside, inside Avenal State Prison, was called YAP, which stood for YAP, uh, Young uh, Youth Adult Awareness Program, and he was one of our main uh, figures in that organization inside the prison system that actually gave a lot of our training, and that's where we received a lot of our training on how to deal with the youth and mentoring youth. So he's here today and he's gonna be sharing with us as well as a, he was a facilitator for the Timeless program with us 
inside the institution. So we have two individuals that served quite some time and they both are recently released after myself as well as we have with us uh, Sajjad Shakur who is a part of the Taiba Foundation which is a, a religious-based, faith-based organization that assists um, Muslim inmates learn their tradition, uh, religious knowledge to prepare them spiritually for returning to society. And in all that, you know, even though we, some of us are Muslim, some of us are not, uh, the idea is to connect with the entire community, not just the Muslim uh, community. That's our goal, that's our objective, is to co connect with the entire community, the Christian community, uh, the non-religious communities, and bring uh, this awareness about mass incarceration, about the need for programs, the, the problem that we have with recidivism in the state of California, the amount of, of prisons and uh, the, the pr prison industrial complex, the amount of money that's being wasted into building prisons and the lack of programs and, and resources. Um, and, and the fact is the, the lack of resources, the lack of, of jobs and employment and, and, and training and things of this nature that's, uh, that doesn't cost, right? Um, it makes it very difficult for someone that's trying to reform, for somebody that's trying to change their life. It's just fortunate enough that while we were incarcerated, we created these programs while we were inside. And in fact, I was one of the founders of the Table Foundation as well, along with uh, Sheikh Rami and Sur. And by having these programs, it, it, it's, it gives hope. It actually produces a type of hope in people that were once convicts, that were once uh, criminal or in, in, in their behavior, in the way they conducted themselves in society. And these are the complaints that we have from the community. So we're trying to bring the community in to say, look, you know, we have a way to addressing these issues of, of crime in the community, you know, drive-by shooting, gang activity, drug abuse, right? But the community has to get behind these type of programs, not just sign their name on a new ballot to build new prisons. Or uh, when there's a new law that comes out, like three strikes. One of our uh, speakers today was a three strike uh, inmate who was incarcerated with 25 years to life, who is now with us today because of the reform that took place in bringing about change to that law uh, of three strikes here in California. So there's a lot of uh, important people here today and a lot of important things to share with the community. So um, without further ado, again, I want to bring up Earl Sims. Now, this is overwhelming for me, the technology. Uh, <laughs> uh, my name is Earl Sims. Uh, my Muslim name is Mu'tman, Abdul Mu'tman. Uh, I served 22 years, as you have said, uh, for a gang-related murder. Um, I, I am one of the proofs that these programs work. If it wasn't for these programs and my spiritual, my spiritual base, that um, I, I would have continued down that downward thinking spiral. And there's a lot of youth that have been a victim of some type of abuse at home. And that's usually where it starts. You know, that's where your foundation is laid when you went from one to seven. And from there you build, from, with negative experiences, you build and build and build. And if you don't release that, you know, it will, it will, it will be unleashed eventually. That pressure, that pressure is going to build. And it's very important to have some type of program or some type of release or support network. And I really expect what you, respect what Yusuf is doing here today because he's offering tools and solutions for society. And it's difficult once you become a part of this system to get out of it. You know, it's real easy to get in, it's, it's hard to get out. Um, I took a young man's life in 1991 because I, 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 felt I, was lo I felt I was missing something or I was lacking something at home. And I gravitated towards gangs. And in these gangs, I, I had experienced this love that I thought I wasn't receiving this validation. And it was conditional love, you know, when you say you love your family, but you choose to run out in the street and get involved in gangs and sell drugs and do things that you wouldn't, that you try to hide from your mother, you know, that's not love. If you love her, you're gonna do the right thing, you know, cause she cares about you. 
Um, as far as the timeless program, I was a part of the timeless program uh, since its inception. Um, I've always been, uh, you know, a participant. But if it wasn't for Yusef and Brother Ty here, uh, I don't think I would have made it because they never gave up on me. And what they're doing now is they don't, they're not giving up on society. A lot of people, they're out here and they're distracted. When I first got out, the first thing that really jumped out was the cell phones. People were just stuck in the cell phone. And my family got me a, a, a what is it, an iPhone 5S. I still don't know how to use it. <laughs> I'm like, where are the buttons? But, um, you know, there's, it's, it's, it's a drastic change after being gone for 22 years. You know, when I was out, the cell phone looked like a brick. You know, so there's a lot of different things that have changed as far as how people treat each other and, and just the culture. Everything is faster, you know, but um, I really encourage anyone, whoever is, has access to this information, to support these groups because our kids matter. You know, um, and the kids, you know, you have to ask for help. When things get rough, you know, you can't hide behind it, behind drugs or behind your friends or this behavior that, you know, that feels good because you're hurting inside. Everybody's been through something. And it's very important. Timeless was so important for me because there was people in that group that would not judge me. They went through the same things that I did. You know, they miss their moms. They cry when it hurt. You know, and, and as men, you know, we think that it's wrong to cry. But it's not. You know, to be in touch with your emotions, um, that's what it is to be human beings. And we lack that. I lack that. But um, it's very, very important to ask for help. That, I can't stress that enough. Because I know how I felt when I was young. When I was, when I was 12, 13, 14 years old and I didn't know how to reach out. I reached out and grabbed the joint. And that was a pattern for me. And I never thought that contributed. I thought it was just the gangs that contributed to me coming to prison and taking someone's life. But the drugs, it was, it was, um, it built up to it. You know, I was never facing my issues. So I was always running. If it wasn't drugs, it was, it was something else. But you have these opportunities to come to these programs and not be judged. And you, won't, you don't want to say anything because you're afraid of being judged. And I understand that. You know, it took me years to grow up. And I was fortunate to have the type of support network that I did and that I do have now. Because when you're stressed, the stress is a trigger. When you're lonely, it's a trigger. These things that affect you. And if you don't have any type of coping mechanisms, you'll resort back to old behavior. And it's really important. Because once you get into this system, it's going to eat you alive. You know, it took 20 to, it took Brother Youssef time to get out. You know, and look what he's doing. So it, it's, it, one of our mottos in Timeless is it's never too late to change. No matter what you have going on in your life, you can change. And there is help. You just have to reach out. So don't give up on yourself. And don't give up on the kids, you know, because they're our future. And, you know, you don't want to be in a position like me where you're saying I could have, should have, would have, or sitting in a courtroom looking at a mother, looking at you like you took my son. You know, and your family dies, your family passes away, and you're in prison. So. With that, um, I hope I've said something to contribute, and I'll bring Brother Yusef back up. Thank you. Oh, Earl Sims, Brother Mookman. So how does it feel being out? Yeah, two weeks now. Two weeks? Um, it's amazing, to say the least. Yeah. yeah. And uh, this is something that, you know, like he said, he was with us at the beginning, at the beginning of Timeless in 2007, 
when we first, uh, you know, came up with the thought that, hey, you know, we need rehabilitation. We have to start reforming ourselves, changing our lives. Um, they used to, they used to look at me there like I was an extremist. I was just, I didn't play games. I didn't play cards. I was just always on this, you know, like just mad, mad man, like a mad scientist or something, you know, because I really believed that, you know, we could be helped. And in fact, when we first started out with Timeless, our focus initially was just uh, the law. We was like, remember, we would come together and meet up and just talk about the laws, you know, the new California laws, the new how to strategize in the courts and, and to get out through the courts. That was like our strategy. We used to meet up on the bleachers and, and sit up and talk about new laws, how we're going to get around this law, how we're going to get around that law. You know, it's not that we weren't changed human beings, but we felt like the only way we were going to get our freedom again was understanding the law. So, you know, a few of us got paralegal uh, degrees. You know, myself, I went and, and studied, and I'm a certified paralegal. A few other of us uh, became paralegals as well. And that's what they're doing now, actually. Some of the other lifers uh, that were serving life terms, they actually running their own uh, paralegal service now, you know, in Southern California. Um, so we all had our way of contributing to this whole cycle that's taking place. And I mean, it's big. You, all you have to do is go to CDCNR dot gov or whatever their website is and you see so much happening in the state of California in terms of incarceration and like I said mass incarceration is not something uh, new uh, in California is starting to get a little bit more attention and uh, lawmakers are starting to look at it slightly different so um, I'm going to be bringing up Johnny Bennett now and he's going to talk a little bit about the importance of services as well and he played a major role in that who's Freshly home as well, still. Okay, come on up, Frank. How's everybody doing today? Uh, my name is Johnny Bennett. I was asked to come here and talk about a couple of subjects. One was my testimony, and the other one was a need for uh, for these groups for when people, re-entry groups for when people come out of prison. Man, I came out of prison about six months ago after doing uh, 24 years on a 25 to life sentence under the murder felony rule. What the murder felony rule means is that if you and your boys are out there gang banging, committing felony, doing dirt, and somebody gets killed, all y'all get 25 to life first degree. It doesn't matter if one of your boys got killed, it doesn't matter if this, who did it. It just matters that everybody's guilty and everybody's going to jail. And don't think your set won't get up there and testify against you so they don't have to go and do that time. So that's how I wanted to start off. Second thing I wanted to talk about was uh, Youssef, man. I just, this guy, I worked in the program office and to get this started, he was at the office every day. If the captain didn't come in till 10, he might be out there at 9 waiting on the captain to come in so he can have a meeting so we can set up time to get these groups inside. That's that willpower, and I learned so much from him about not stopping, keeping going. So uh, the importance of, uh, of groups out here, anger management groups. A lot of us that came out of prison, they want us to take them, even though we had to take so many just to come out but they want us to get them out here. And I'm from Solano County, and they don't have them. Right now, I'm have to, I have to uh, enroll in a batterers program. That's where uh, these guys that beat on their women and stuff like that, and take that as an anger management group. Now, personally, I got a fundamental issue with that, but that's just something that I have to do because we don't have these groups, these groups that Yousef, that Timeless, is getting out into these communities. Because when we come out, it ain't easy. I mean, when we're inside and we're dreaming about that day when we come out, we're thinking about our families and we're going to be walking in streets of gold just like heaven. And then you get out here and the streets ain't turned to gold. It's the same. It, it's, it's, it's hard out here and it's rough. And without a family to support you, that's why recidivism is so high. It's high because because no matter how hard we plan on getting out, if we don't have a family support, a transitional housing, 
groups like Timeless, AA, NA, Anger Management, things like that, things that keep us in check and show us how to live because we haven't been in society for 24, 25 years. We're out here and we ain't been out since we were 16, 17, 18, 19, and for me, 20. And I'm 45 now. So life has changed so much and you can't prepare for it. It's that hard, it's that rough. I didn't realize it a couple of times I considered going back because it was easier in there for me than it was to come out and miss on all these blessings that I have because I just didn't feel it. It was hard. But then I can go to these groups. I can go to one of these programs like this Timeless or I can call a buddy and they can help me out and put me straight, put me back on, back on track. And it's awesome. Family is awesome, but not everybody has that because after so long, even your family forgets. I'm, I'm fortunate though, I got a, a crazy wonderful support system. Now a little bit about me. Uh, I grew up in Indiana, between Indiana and California. I was, in, I was, uh, I was uh, part of a divorced family. A lot, of us, uh, a lot of us come from broken families. I use that as, as an excuse to go out and be able to do dirt and to do whatever I wanted to do. And, uh, and I got caught up in this murder. It's hard. Like uh, Brother Earl said, sitting across from a family that you devastated, that you took their breadwinner, their husband from, or their son. And I just found out that the guy who got killed in my case had a one-year-old son. He's 25 now, expecting a son of his own, and he still has ill feelings about what happened. And of course he was. Who wouldn't? Somebody takes your father away, or your brother, or, or somebody who means something to you, they're going to have some personal feelings about that some issues. And he grew up and he struggled. And he struggled because of what I did had waves of, circ of, of, had waves of consequences that I didn't know about, that I didn't face, that these groups can teach you about. So after 24 years of being inside, I finally came home and it was a struggle. But all praises to God that uh, that I'm out now and I'm doing it right and uh, for these programs and I really encourage you to support these programs find out get on this timeless.com or you know Yousef will tell you where you need to go to to get it because they got instructors and they got people who are passionate about this program who are passionate about making sure that not everybody goes back to prison because they're, they're waiting for us they got cells ready, they got bunks ready, they got, they're ready for us to come back and they're working for us to come back and we need somebody in our corner that's going to keep us grounded, keep us sane, and keep us home. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, thank you, uh, Johnny. So what I want to do now, and uh, I really appreciate, you know, we were all inside, you know, it's, it's really just seeing them today is amazing to me because we were inside at the same, all the same, we was on the same facility. We were all, in, we were on the same facility. But what is the same about us is that we participated in the programs. You know, we were really involved in the programs. We used to talk about what it would be like when we got home. You know, will we get home? At one time we were like, they closing the doors on us. They're not gonna let, ever let us out because that's just the nature of California at the time. But actually when Jerry Brown came in and became the governor, uh, there was some hope. I mean, he came in and he revamped this uh, way the uh, commissioners do business at the board of prison hearing and things changed for us. So uh, that had a lot to do with our freedom today as well. But at the same time, it was still based on the fact that we had a program. When you go in front of a, a, a panel of commissioners, inside uh, California's board and prison hearings, they want to know what's your plans when you get home? What are your goals? Um, you know, what they call it, a parole plan. What's your parole plan? And they want to see it. They want to see it written out. And today, you know, just since I've been doing the youth development programs and things like that, the kids are really lazy. Trying to get a kid to sit down and write down his goals. 
is difficult. Just say, hey, look, sit down. What, what are your goals? Give me some short-term goals and some long-term goals. What are they? Half of these kids don't know where to start. They don't know where to start. And, and a lot of them are older. I mean, we're talking about 18, 19 years old, and they still don't have goals. They still haven't sat down and said, look, these are my short-term short goals, and this is how I tend to achieve them. These are my long-term goals, and this is how I tend to achieve those, right? So it's really a difficult struggle for people that are on the streets, that are getting in trouble already, whether they're in high school. And now what I notice, some of the best high schools, even in Fremont, in the area I live, Union City, Fremont, every high school I go to, every, on the weekend, on Fridays, I go to the high schools, and they got a police car at the high school. I'm talking about some of the best high schools. You see a police car that's, that's stationed there during lunchtime, they walking around. I was in Pleasanton, Foothill High School, a couple of weeks ago. Police car sitting there, you know, walking around, standing in the front on the ground. I'm like, what is this? These are some of the best schools in the Bay Area. But they concerned about these kids selling drugs, right? Um, you know, uh, bullying and bringing guns on campus, things like this. So it's a real thing. It's not just gangs. But it's other issues that happens in a youth life, like Earl was pointing out, that when they start feeling a certain way at a certain age, you know, you never know where they're going to end up in the next five years. So uh, these pro programs are really important, and I just kind of like want to take this opportunity because this is partly for, uh, to assist you, the audience, in training you if you're interested in becoming a part of Timeless in a more uh, active way. Um, so I just want to, at this time, just do this clip before we bring our uh, next presenter up, because I want you to kind of like get an idea of what it is we do um, here at Timeless. So today we're here at the Pseudo Room here in Oakland, California, located on Broadway, 2141 Broadway in downtown Oakland. Some of the topics that we want to cover today is related to mass incarceration, uh, another soldier's return, where we have two soldiers here today, or three, actually, <laughs> that'll be returning uh, to the community, that'll be sharing their testimony with us today as well as targeted programs. We're going to talk a little bit about Timeless and how we have targeted programs, uh, the need for outreach workers, as well as a presentation by the Table Foundation, as well as other programs that may be here today uh, in audience. So I just want to, first of all, let you know that if you can look at the board, it says at the top programs, you have education, rehabilitation, and those are the two primary things that we need in order to 
uh, uh, reform someone, whether it be someone that's uh, recently returning to society from incarceration or even a youth, because it's very important to have youth development programs. Uh, in fact, we just recently changed the name from youth intervention to youth development. We think that the name youth development is more appropriate because sometimes when you say intervention, uh, these are terms that are used that sometimes uh, scare away potential uh, mentor or, or mentees that may be interested in, in taking advantage of our services. So when they hear the term youth intervention, they automatically assume or oh, they're in trouble or they're juvenile delinquent or something like that. But we want to embrace our youth in a way that they feel a part of the community and that they can uh, be provided with some of the same services that we offer through Timeness. So youth development is also a part of our program which we have on Mondays. On Mondays, we have the program in Union City, um, located on 111 uh, 8th Street. That's 41's 8th Street in Union City. And that's taking place on Mondays from 3.30 to 5 o'clock. And then on Thursday, we have our adult reentry. Good afternoon, everybody. We're here at the Timeless Group program called Community Project. I'm glad that everybody could make it, and I'm sure that more will be coming in momentarily, but we want to keep time, and uh, that's very important that we are called Timeless, so we should also be on time as well. So um, we have a couple of people here that's going to be presenting, that's going to have something to say. We're going to have some testimonies uh, from some of our members as well as visitors that's traveled to see us and participate in this program today. So um, without further ado, I want to just go over a, a couple of things that we have going on for our program today. <clears> the <throat> program, which is taking place in the same location from 5.30 to 7 o'clock. So that's what we have going on currently with Timeless. And as we proceed through the program today, we're going to be sharing a, a number of things that we're doing with the program and how we're trying to connect the program with the community. Uh, because without the community, we really can't go forward uh, without getting the community involvement and grassroots activity, things that's going to bring attention and light to what it is we're doing here as an organization. Um, it, it's very, very uh, critical that we have your support as a community. So um, without further ado, I want to bring forward one of our, our speakers, and who's, and this let me say, um, he's recently released from prison, from, from Avenal State Prison. In fact, the same institution I was incarcerated myself. Uh, his name is Earl Sims, and he was recently released like two weeks ago, actually. And he's now in society after serving 22 years in the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. Um, we also have Johnny Bennett who's also uh, a recently incarcerated uh, inmate who's now living in Fairfield, California, who's with us today, who's going to also be sharing his story. And he was really active as well in the programs. In fact, um, the youth development program that we had inside, inside Avenal State Prison, was called YAP, which stood for YAP, uh, Young uh, Youth Adult Awareness Program. And he was one of our main uh, figures in that organization inside the prison system that actually gave a lot of our training and that's where we received a lot of our training on how to deal with the youth and mentoring youth. So he's here today and he's going to be sharing with us as well as a, he was a facilitator for the Timeless program with us inside the institution. So we have two individuals that served quite some time and they both are recently released after myself as well as we have with us uh, Sajad Shakur who is a part of the Taiba Foundation, which is a, a religious-based, faith-based organization that assists um, Muslim inmates learn their